recommend, right? Are there compost? If you don't make great compost, I recommend you buy some mackerel compost and use it with amendments as a starter mix to put, be put in with your transplants. Um, and this is a little off topic, but it's such important information that I think you need to know it and it kind of fits into the future where your seedlings are going, right? If you use compost or compost tea with whatever fertilizer you use, you need le way less fertilizer, okay? And I get to fit another one of my little nuggets in. You know, I always squeeze them in, right? Um, and this one is Dr. Elaine Ingham in 1997 at the Echo Farm Conference told us of a test that was done to see how many times nitrogen was exchanged in a given minute, in a given cubic centimeter or about a tablespoon of soil, right? So to do, to do this test, um, and this will probably show up on every video, <laughs> to do this test, they irradiated a nitrogen molecule and then followed it, right? Any guesses as to how many times one nitrogen molecule was exchanged in one minute in a given cubic, cubic centimeter, centimeter of good live soil? 1,100 times. I mean, we all know how, how fast bacteria look when we see those um, pictures of them, right? I mean, it looks like a, like, like a, like Tokyo on, on fast forward, right? I mean, it's just like incredibly fast moving, right? Our New York City on fast forward, okay? All right, so what that means is that somebody ate that nitrogen molecule, somebody ate that somebody, right? That somebody pooped, somebody ate the poop, you know? That somebody had a baby, you know? All those cycles happen that fast. That means that that nitrogen is literally in suspended animation. It is suspended in the soil because those microbes swim. They don't wash away, right? They stay put when it rains, right? Unless the rain's really catastrophic, right? And they're alive, and the nitrogen's there. Guess what? Once in a while, somebody poops, and the plant gets that nitrogen. Okay. Or once in a while, it lands next to um, a fungi, and the fungi takes it up, and the fungi is connected to the plant. They got a deal going. Yep. The fungi's moving nutrients to the plant. The plant's moving nutrients to that. So that, that's why we grow organic. Because the life makes the nutrients available, preserves the nutrients, and puts, it, puts the food there in the way the plant was meant to take it. At the right proportions, right? The intelligence is there. When you use chemical fertilizer, you're saying, I'm God. I'm putting this very concentrated, high salt fertilizer in, right? Which fries all the life. And the plant's got no choice. It's in solution. It's got to take something up. It can take up way too much nitrogen. And what you get, I mean, years ago I sold lettuce to Mountain, mountain, um, mountain Produce. And um, Mountain Foods, rather. Mountain Foods is a, a great food distributor. And Ron Anspan's a friend. And I, was, I had a bakery next to his produce business. And he walked in one night at 12 o'clock at night. We were both working too late, you know. And he said, man, I just found three cases of your lettuce back there. It must be three weeks old, Pat. You know what? It looks better than the stuff that came from California. I can't believe this organic stuff. And why? Because the stuff from California is chock full of nitrogen, full of weak water cells, doesn't have many minerals, doesn't have all these solubles in the cells, right, which are nutrients, right? And the stuff that we grow is dense with nutrients. And the cells were strong because of the minerals and it wasn't breaking down. So there, I just gave you my whole philosophy for why you want to grow organic. <laughs> um, on the other hand, Yes. Uh, on the mac and roll products, you said compost and the other any other products. I'm going to get to okay. it. Actually, okay. this is a, this is a, a slight aside that I can never resist. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, They're the golden nuggets, though. Keep on. <laughs> Pardon? The reason I keep right. coming back is you always have a couple of new ones. Right. A couple of new nuggets. Right. You've heard a few of them before, though, haven't you? <laughs> you know, here and there. Yeah. Um, uh, the other side of that, though, is that there are growers, especially in California, conventional growers that have figured out that they too can use life with their conventional f fertilizers and they use less conventional fertilizer. If they use small enough amounts that they don't fry the life, they can make their conventional fertilizer go way further. And that's a testimony to what we always heard, Ed, you probably heard it too. Back when we were first getting into organic, didn't extension people tell you there was no difference? The plants didn't know the difference, nobody knew the difference. You put that nitrogen in the soil, it's all nitrogen. Well, that's kind of true. Yeah, the plants can use it. I mean, you know, there's no difference that way, but too much of it kills it. And so, yes, the life, you know, life will look at that conventional fertilizer and say, it's food. And they'll move it into an organic system 
and those conventional growers are doing a better job, you know? And it is a continuum. There's not like organic and conventional in my mind. I don't want us to be opposed to each other. I want us to all learn together and develop the best systems. So I love that those conventional growers are using a little bit of fertilizer with compost and getting way more yield. You know? But that leads to why you want to buy the Macaroque compost, which is one of the products, right? You didn't make your own. You take compost and mix alfalfa in, meal in it, mix fish meal in it, right? Mix um, azomite, which is A to Z minerals in it, right? Mix um, what else could you mix in it? If you're low on phosphorus, a little bit of phosphorus or something, because the life is in there and the life will eat that stuff, it then becomes part of the sus suspended animation, the soil food web, and all of a sudden, a little bit of fertilizer goes way further. You know? So that's why I recommend that even if you're buying potting soil, if you have a made good compost, and you do the kind of farming I do, which is to actually, or we do, which is actually to put a handful of something good at the base of the plant, then that's what I recommend. Now, big time farmers, they have to talk to Ron Morris and get the cutting edge new technology to do that because they don't have a system for doing that. They could do it. You know, the people with the, the um, transplanters that you used to see for tobacco or the guys sit in the back and they hand the seeds out, they could do that. If in that tank of water they had compost tea, they could get the same effect by putting compost tea in. You know, or close to the same effect. Not quite as stable, but good enough. You know? So, how would they make their compost tea? They'd use macro compost. Macro makes good compost. You can count on it. We make compost tea out of macro compost. My friend John Nilsson, who's like a compost savant, compost genius, he shudders when I tell him that because he wants to have only tested compost used for compost tea. What can I say? What can you say, Rocco? Darn good results, right? Good results. We're okay with it. We also use our own compost. We're making good, good enough compost now that we're okay with that too. Yeah. We haven't tested it. Should we? Best practice? Absolutely. Are we farmers? Yes. Did Best we test everything? No. Reality. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, my friend John says he has a hard time giving lectures to farmers because they always want to do the two cent solution. Yeah. That's because they get the, the customers want to pay them two cents for their food. So they have to use a two cent solution. Not the local food community, but, you know, in general, farmers have a hard time with pricing. Okay, so compost is a great product for macaroni, right? They also have two types of potting soil. They have their nicely labeled, pretty package, light mix, and you can buy that at Reams Creek. Reams Creek sells that because it's what people expect to see. It's in a small unit. They also have their commercial packs, which are not meant for retail sale. Wade sells that. You know, he has made up his own labels to put with them. You know, the thing is, you can make three or four times what's in one of those bags of the light mix. And what's the difference? The commercial one doesn't have the perlite in it. Perlite's a whole lot cheaper than Mac and Roll, you know? So what I recommend is you buy the commercial one without the pretty label and get a much better deal. You know? um, and that those are the two main products. They also have other products. They have a, a woodland planting mix, which is mostly peat and compost. And so you might want to do that, though I'd sit here and go, well, gee, maybe you can get a better price on peat down here and just buy the... You're paying shipping from New York, you know? Whereas if you're buying peat here, it's from somebody who brought in tractor trailer loads, and there's better shipping, you know? So you might still be better off to mix them. You know? They have some other products, too. You can go online and look at the products. The three that I recommend, if you don't want to mix your own Perlite, it's the light mix. That's going to be Omri approved, by the way. They're going to get it Omri approved. I'm going... You should be getting the, the farmer's mix on me approved because the farmers care about it and the home, home growers don't care. You can tell them, yes, it's, it's, it meets organic, and now the home growers are going to say, fine. The farmer needs to have it documented, so I think they made a mistake. But that's what they did. Because it was their best seller, they got that, that on me approved. Um, the truth is, since perlite's allowed, anybody can make their argument and win it to a certifier that I'm using the same thing that's in this, these are the two ingredients, and I bought allowed perlite, it should be allowed. You know. But it's now Omri approved. I don't recommend it, but it's convenient at, at Reams Creek. If you want to go there and get it, why not? You know, I recommend instead getting the deal from Troy's or buying it for a few bucks more a bag from Fifth Season and going with the, the um, farmer, you know, plain pack, I call it. You know, That's a better deal. And then you can buy the Macaron compost, which has a very pretty label on it. Yeah, they do like pretty labels. And it's just great compost. Something to know. A couple things to know. I managed to get Wade to keep his covered for most of the season. 
But if you pull up to a place that's selling that stuff and it's sitting out in the rain, you want to smell it before you buy it. Because they have to have holes in those bags for it to breathe. If they can't take on too much rain and sit in the sun, it could go anaerobic. In which case, it's not nearly as good as it was. Now, it's so good that I found that if I have a bag of anaerobic mackerel, if I mix it with stuff and put it in the soil, within a, a week or two, it's fine for planting. Because life fixes things, you know. But it's not ideal, you know. And indeed, your feedback to, to Troy's will get him to keep it in his new building. You know, he's just used to, all those places are used to leaving all that stuff sit out in the rain, and it's not good practice with any of them. What happens if you just set it out and let it dry? If you set it out and let it dry and not over dry, it'll shift back. You know, a lot of the things that, that go anaerobic are facultative. They'll go anaerobic, but once the conditions become not anaerobic, they'll switch to aerobic. And then the aerobic life will start to come back too, because it hasn't died completely. So yes, it can remediate, but it's like best practice is not to get it. Okay, so that's what I have to say about Mackinac. And I think now let's take a hands-on break and make some potting soil. Okay.